Hello and welcome to this guide for nuclear power plants. What we're going to be doing in this guide is we're going to be constructing a much bigger nuclear power plant than we already have here. So what we have at the moment is about seven nuclear power plants that produce about um, a little bit over 14 or maybe 16 and a half ish um, gigawatts. And we're going to take that from 7 to 21 in total of these nuclear power plants. So that's going to be constructing a total of 70 or producing a total of 70 gigawatts of electricity. And there are two very interesting parts um, to this build that I wanted to highlight. So the first one is that there isn't going to be any long-term storage of the nuclear waste that you can see is being generated in abundance by these power plants. What we're going to do with it is actually keep processing it and eventually dump it into a into the awesome sink. Um, and we will actually get a lot of points from, from doing that. The other interesting part is that this is a completely isolated production line from the rest of um, all the other production lines that I have, right? So I'm not taking some of the advanced materials from any of our existing production lines that um, now you can't see my base at the moment. If I keep going too close to <laughs> these nuclear power plants, I'm going to get irradiated, um, which I already am. But yeah, we basically have all of the materials that we actually need available at our home base, but we're not going to make use of them. So we're going to be using the raw inputs, which is uranium, sulfur, coal, iron ore, bauxite, lots of other things, um, nitrogen, and um, building the everything that it takes to um, sort of supply these nuclear power plants and also process the waste um, in an isolated form. The reason for that is because if if you sort of rely on materials that you might also use for other things, if um, those production lines become overloaded, your grid won't be able to keep working, and then you can't produce materials, and then you sort of end uh, end up in a death loop or death spiral, where um, it'll be really hard to recover from. Um, so that's the reason why you want to isolate it. Um, so for the build, we've actually used a very nice technique because we're going to need a lot of building materials. But um, I have a guide out that shows you how to use a transportation network and sort of programmable splitters to actually get all of the materials that you need for a build um, over here. So you can see this is way more than I could ever carry in my inventory at a time. In fact, my inventory is quite empty at the moment. Um, but all of the materials that we actually need are all already available here and I didn't bring any of the materials over here. They were all brought over here by drones. Okay, the way that we're going to approach this guide is in a sort of backwards way, which I think will help you make sense of it. So <clears throat> this looks like a wall of text, which it is. Um, but it describes essentially the end-to-end -end process. Um, and currently I have scaled these, these production lines to be able to support 14 nuclear power plants, right? So I only have seven, so I could still double this and not have to expand any of the production over there. So that's where we're actually producing the nuclear fuel rods and then also processing the waste. But um, as we go through the the guide, we're going to be looking at each of these sort of um, production lines and doing what's necessary to actually double them. Um, we'll also show you a little bit of the raw material mining. So these are all the raw materials that sort of go into it, into the end-to-end -end process. What I've already done off camera is actually um, double all of these resources. So we will have everything that we need delivered um, to the production lines over there already. So that'll be really nice. So yeah, the first thing we're going to focus on is actually the uh, building the nuclear power plants, right? And the nuclear power plants, they require um, uranium fuel rods 
and they require a lot of water. Basically, five um, what are these called? White water extractors can supply enough water for two power plants, right? Because one power plant takes um, 300 water, I believe. And one of these water extractors produces 120 water. So if you sort of multiply that by five, that's 600, which is enough for two nuclear power plants. So the first thing we're going to do here is actually change this to 28 nuclear power plants that we're going to be um, putting down. So instead of 14, we're going to double it to 28. I think I said 21 before, that's not quite right. Um, it's going to be producing 28. And then of course, we're also going to be doubling the amount of uranium waste per minute that's generated. We're also going to be doubling the power that's produced to 70 gigawatts. We need to double the amount of water that we actually need to feed into it and we're also going to need to double the uranium fuel rod and this is going to be 5.6 uranium fuel rod per minute now you might say that's not a, a lot but the production lines actually produce at a very slow rate as well so um, we already have seven manufacturers that require for 2.8 uranium fuel rod per minute um, so it's actually quite intensive to create these fuel rods even at this very low rate Okay, so we're going to leave all of these other things to one side for a minute um, and we'll just focus on this power plant and also on the water that's required. So we will need about um, 70 water extractors here um, because we have now 8400 water um, and of course we're going to be um, 84 times 20 No, 70 times 120. We're going to be, uh, actually, we're going to be producing exactly enough, which is quite a good turn of events. So we're no longer going to be overproducing. Okay, so the next step is for me to actually put down all of these power plants. So then we'll generate demand for. Uh, more nuclear fuel rods, which of course are not going to be supplied beyond being able to support 14 power plants for now. We still have to fix that, uh, double that production of that over there. Um, and we're also going to be, of course, increasing the nuclear waste production, but that's fine. We can already process enough waste from 14 nuclear power plants. So the way that I'm going to structure this is that I'll show you, in the case of the nuclear power plants, I'll show you how to build um, two of them because that's sort of the easiest unit of production to show because, um, you know, we have to put five put down five water extractors and then connect two nuclear power plants and so on. Um, and then we'll do the rest just as a sort of off uh, outside of the guide and I'll just show you what it looks like once it's done. So let me prepare the foundations and so on for the first couple of power plants and then I'll um, check back in with you. Okay, so now we have the foundations and so on put down. Now I'm gonna have a hard time with this without um, being able to uh, fly here. But the nuclear power plants essentially just need to have a corner right. Oh boy. These are very finicky to place precisely where you want them. There, I'm pretty sure that's what we want. Um, let's compare it to this. Yes, radiation levels are really bad. I think that's pretty good. Actually, um, I was on the wrong corner. So we have two uh, foundations in front of the nuclear power plant, right? So it needs to essentially go onto this corner here, at the front left of it. Well, actually, this corner here. Um, so let's put it there, which and the precise placement of this will actually matter for the purpose of putting in the um, the belt. So that lines up pretty well, and then let's check. So this sort of thing lines up with this. Let's make sure that that's the same over here. Um, well, we can't really see. But yeah, it looks pretty much, um, 
Uh, looks like it's slightly further forward actually. Let's check that. Yeah, it's one further forward. So let's try this placement again. So it would be so that's one possible position, and the other one is oh boy. Actually, the easiest way to do this. I need this to be further back. All right. So let's try from up here. Okay, so that's one position. That's the other position that I can put it in. So I'm pretty sure it's then this position here. Yep, I think that's spot on. All right, and now we just have to place the new nuclear power plants in line with that. Okay, so the next step is that we need to get the input materials over here. And for that, we are drawing the belts. As you can see, these splitters are just to the left of this sort of grate. Um, so let's put the splitter right there. Um, and that matters a lot to be able to get the material into here. Okay. I'm pretty sure that splitter is right. Let's check. Okay, that conveyor belt is too long. Yep, this is precisely right. Okay, so now we're getting the fuel rods over here already and we're getting ourselves heavily irradiated. Um, so then the next step is to actually place the splitters here. Um, so the input line has to be backwards and then um, I'm not going to get that material over here to save us a little bit from radiation. So this needs to line up with this and this needs to come out to here. Then the next step is that we actually need to put down this water um, and that needs to be precisely at that height so the water input goes it's in line with these um, and it starts here and then what we need to do is we need to put one of these stackable pipelines on top right and what we'll also do actually is place the second nuclear power plant here um, and it goes precisely so it needs to go lined up with this power plant and then lined up with the start of that next foundation okay so that's really good um, we'll also give this one the splitter treatment um, so we put that there and then the other end of this pipe will actually be there's an autosave will be precisely here um, and then we'll also take this and then what we'll do is try to put this in but of course it's going to be too long so we will need another stack of conveyor belt. Now, you might be tempted to place it right here, but that's going to clash with something that we need to put there. So we will put it right here, and that should work out fine. Um, okay, before we put that pipe in, we also need to actually put in this merger. And for that, we need to go, so this is the height of the pipe, so we need to go one higher, and yeah, the output needs to face this way and um, be able to be inserted here. And this is why it matters that we get the placement right, which of course we didn't quite get right here. Um, now we did get this placement right, but we, for some reason we didn't manage to get placement of this splitter right. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky, right? Like it's 
sort of saying that it's aligned he here as well to something, but I don't I have no idea what that is. Um, it might be one of those. Um, No, okay, so it was actually trying to align itself with this. Um, and this is also wrong. So yeah, you can see that the precise placement of these things is quite important. Um, okay, and then we will get this merger in. Three, four. So that's one above. And the reason that placement is so important is because we will need this here to actually input into that um, merger. Then you can get rid of all of those underneath, but you have to, otherwise it's going to clip quite a lot. Okay, and then we can put this part in and have that available like so. And then the other thing that we actually need to do over here is that we need to have this merger in place as well. So that merger delivers the nuclear waste back. So we can also get rid of these two in between or we can leave them. It's up to your preference. So um, I'm not going to connect the power because I'm, I need to be doing a lot of building over here and I don't feel like getting irradiated but we would just put that into there and this into there um, the next step I usually do um, well actually let's finish connecting this into there and then we can actually also connect these things together so here it's okay to connect them so that's how we would connect this and of course, this is how we connect that. Um, and then we need to actually connect this pipe. Uh, for the pipe, we still needed something between. Yeah, again, uh, we will need this space to do something else. So we just have to place this like here. That's basically where the connection downstream to the water goes. Now, this clips a little bit. But I think it just looks like this is sitting on top of the pipe. Um, so that's why I'm okay with that amount of clipping. Okay. So for the water, now we, this one is connected slightly differently, but don't worry about that. So the water actually comes up through here. So it's sort of one foundation over. We just put in a um, floor hole. And this is between the two um, power plants. And then we need one of these splitters. And it's not going to tell, give me any guidance here at all in terms of how that's going to work. So let's try something. So to get a nice um, pipe in, you actually want to go two meters back. And that should be pretty nice. And then let's get this guy in. And then if you go to horizontal to vertical, this will do something pretty nice. And now hopefully it's going to give me uh, a guide here. No. So what we can do is we can just jump on top of this pipeline here. Well, if we were more dexterous anyway. Okay, now we're on top here. So that lines up there, but of course it's not going to give me anything nice up here. So we'll just have to line it up the best that we can. I think that'll work. That's not perfect, but... So let's try and get it in slightly further to the right. But yeah, some of these things are just not going to tell you or give you a guide precisely the way that you want. I think that's pretty much bang on. I don't know if I can really do better than that. Okay, so at this point, we are feeding in the fuel rods. We're taking out the waste. Actually, the waste we can connect up. Um, just don't want to connect the fuel rods because they're going to 
be quite bad in terms of radiation. Now you can see that that belt is too long, so we just need to line up something here. One and a two. Okay, uh, and a three. And then we can hook this belt to here and that belt to there. Cool. So now the output waste is connected, just the input waste is not. Um, the other thing that we have to do, of course, is put in power. So let's do that. Um, let's check where I put this power over here. I think it's on the inside. Okay, so it's on this line, but one offset to the left. That's easy enough to do. So it would be to here, and then of course we can connect that guy in, and then we'll do the same over here. So it's on this line, one to the left, and then we can connect these guys in. So right now their problem is they don't have any fuel and they don't have any water. Um, they, they are connected to the grid though. So for the water, we go one level below. And that's of course why we picked this particular location because there is a huge amount of water. Now in terms of the map, um, the location that we are at is right over here. Um, and the reason that we picked it is because of this uranium location and this huge body of water. Um, okay, so now we need some of these. And we will put that one there. Um, two. And, uh, come on, three. Okay, and then the other, um, we'll put four on this side. And then we will just put two on this side, lined up with these second ones. Okay, let's try to get, yeah, I think that'll be good. And then we will say, uh, this. Okay, so that's the water taken care of. What we will then do is we will also take power from here to, um, I believe it's sort of on this corner. Of course, connect these in. pipeline floor hole is right over there which is very a very interesting location for it um, slightly different to over there but I think that's related to the placement of this I think we'll work with it um, it's not terribly bad so what we'll do is we'll put one of those in and then we'll see how far we can take this particular pipe Okay, it won't be all the way to the back, so let's hook it to here, and then we will also hook it to, yeah, about, I don't want to connect it to here, because that's going to be the start of the next ones, so we'll just put it in the middle of this particular pipe, and then we will put in these junctions, good, this junction and of course this junction and then we can also put in these guys here okay nice and of course if I was able to fly right here we would 
be able to do this in a much easier way. So you can see these make 120 water per minute and now I have to find that floor hop roof hole. Okay, here we go. So to, for alignment purposes, let's put in um, this and let's see, does it want to give us anything? No, it does not. Um, so we'll just have to do our best here. Probably something like this. Okay, and then we will connect this up here, which is very nice. And then the last thing is that we will need a pump here. Okay, so we'll just have to relocate this thing here somewhere slightly differently like right here let's see that's all good connect that into there and then we will be able to put in a pump here and we'll put it sort of like here and then um, over here I think we've been angling them like this and then the last step is that we actually need to connect power into here. This guy also needs some power from right there. Um, and then the other thing that we usually need to make sure of um, is that, you know, oops, these pipes are actually working, uh, these pumps are working. So we have um, water in here. And then let's go back up to the top and just check on the pipes up there. Um, to make sure. Now we actually haven't connected the um, water into the nuclear power plants yet, but we're getting water up here, which is one of the key things that you want to check. I usually find that you want to put the top part of these floor um, holes in first and then um, you don't run out run into problems sometimes when I put the bottom half in first it doesn't actually um, work for me so they're now getting water um, and they're going to be consuming 300 meters cubed of water per minute and of course in the bottom we're getting 300 cubic meters of water per minute as well so all of these will actually start to work just as soon as we connect these um, uranium or these nuclear fuel rods into here which again I don't want to do just yet because I still have quite a bit of building to do over here. So now you have witnessed us putting down two of these so what I'm going to do now is just keep building until we reach the target of 28 um, or I might sort of come back and, and see if there's something else that I want to share in between we'll see. But yeah talk to you in a bit. Okay now we have connected the next seven so what we're going to do is actually connect the fuel and then we'll just start seeing this working so this has now got fuel good this doesn't have fuel ah okay so we missed something here good those are always good things to catch. Okay, we've made connected that, we've connected that. Um, ooh, right, let's see. This guy has fear, you can see our power getting ramped up. So that can return those barrels. Um, let's check this next one. Okay, yep, this is going pretty good. We just have an autosave going. Right. Yep, uranium waste also coming back. And then this one also has what it needs. Uranium waste is able to go back. And then the last one has what it needs. Uranium waste is going back. 
Good. So there you can see we've connected another seven nuclear power plants. Let's try and stay away from the radiation as much as possible. Of course, now we will be generating a lot more nuclear waste, which is fine. We already have capacity to process all of this nuclear waste. Um, and now the next step is to double this again. Um, so to go to not only 14 nuclear power plants, but to 28. So we'll check back in with you shortly once we um, have figured that bit out. As we make our way up to our vantage point here, as you can see, we have connected, we've built all of the... Um, let's get rid of what I'm holding. Okay. We've built all of the nuclear power plants and they're all working, which is a great achievement. Uh, all right, hang on. Just want to get a screenshot of that. Okay. Um, so yeah, we <laughs> put down all of the power that we will ever need in the game. These are 28. So 7, 14, 21, 28 nuclear power plants. Now, at the moment, um, the only reason that all of them are working is because we had a bunch of nuclear fuels um, saved up. But um, our production, which is just in the distance near that waterfall behind all of the, the water vapor here, um, doesn't actually support all of these um, nuclear power plants. So what we'll have to do next time, um, or like the, I'm right, streaming this at the same time if you want to watch it, it it's streamed on YouTube as well as on Twitch. Um, but yeah, the next step that we are going to be looking at is actually first sort of going backwards so we'll look at what it takes to make these uranium fuel rods in various stages. Um, and then we'll also take a look at um, going forward. So how do we actually process the uranium waste, um, which ends up um, going into an awesome sink. You can only put plutonium fuel rods into the awesome sink. You can't put um, the uranium waste and some of these intermediate materials that involve so for example, non fissile uranium, you also can put into the awesome sink. Um, but yeah, so that's the next step that we're going to have to do. So now that we have created the demand for the material for the nuclear fuel, we will now actually have to put together the supply. Um, so yeah, we'll be back shortly with um, the first step of that. Okay, so the uh, we've now changed locations, so the all the nuclear power plants are like somewhere over there. You can see them; they actually look kind of small in the distance there. So what um, what we've done there is we've increased the demand for the uranium um, fuel rod, of course, to 5.6. It used to be 2.8. Um, but all of our manufacturing lines, which are all of these things that we need to look at in a minute, um, are only producing enough for 2.8 uranium fuel rod in most cases. So the next step is for us to actually go through our production line and increase the uranium fuel rod production, which um, I'll use as a reason to um, help uh, to explain how all of this works. So we're going to do it in sort of stages. The first thing that I'll sort of explain is how these uranium, sorry, this uranium fuel rods actually made. Um, and uh, we'll go all the way back through the encased uranium cell production, then the uranium production here, as well as the sulfuric acid production, which will also show how the water is connected. And then we'll go through all the other materials. Um, but yeah, we'll start with. Um, these seven manufacturers, which is the last step before the uranium fuel rods are actually shipped off. So currently they only produce 2.8 uranium fuel rod um, per minute, so we need to double that to 14 manufacturers. 
um, that are making 5.6 uranium fuel rod per minute, right? Which means that they need 28 electromagnetic control rod, um, which we'll also produce here, um, but we'll just park that for a minute. They also need 16.8 um, encased industrial beams. Um, again, we'll park that for a minute, but they're also produced here. And then they need 240 encased uranium cells, um, which we'll get to in just a minute up here. But yeah, the first thing that we'll do is that we'll look at these manufacturers. And conveniently, I have already put down everything except the last one so that I can show you um, how these work. So let's grab this splitter. Um, now I know it's night time, so let's turn on the um, light, although that doesn't seem to help very much. So in this case, I'm looking to place this splitter just one meter inside from the foundation, lining up with that input slot for the manufacturer. And um, the input needs to be coming from behind me. Yeah, so that's that one. And then we need a second input. So for that, we need to go up a bit um, for that one. And then the last one here, and again, just keeping an eye on that left input, um, goes up one further. And then what we do is that we delete all of these splitters at the bottom here. Um, and uh, we can connect these guys in together so that the production line can start. Okay, and I'll just make my way onto this side. This one's a little bit finicky. Uh, almost had it right there. Come on. There you go. Um, then what we want to do is use these um, lifters to actually hook these materials in. And then finally, we can also connect this material in. Now, um, the other thing that we need to do is actually select the recipe. So we're making uranium fuel rods here. And of course, we need to have the um, power connected, which I usually do sort of on this corner here. And then the last step is, of course, um, that we need to find some sort of way through here and then connect things on the output. And again, these mergers go one meter in from that foundation um, and then just lining up with the output, pointing backwards to collect the output material. Um, and then we'll have these connected in here. So now all of these should be happily producing, um, except they're not getting in case uranium cells. They only have two here, so they still need a few more. But some of these other ones um, should actually be getting some more of them over time. Um, now, we actually are not producing the encased uranium cells at anywhere near high enough rate um, at the moment, which is going to be the key sort of input that's missing. Um, and I believe the encased uranium cells will be coming in one of these two top locations, but they come from this side here, right? So this is where we make the encased uranium cell and the encased uranium cell, let's go look at that production line. So we have taken care of this one. Let's just mark that as done. So let's go up to the um, encased uranium cell. So this production line is done in a blender. So currently we have five, so we need to go to 10 blenders. Um, and of course the demand is now going to be 240 um, in case you're in cell, and we're going to slightly underproduce here um, deliberately. So uh, just because um, we can't meet all of this production, that's the reason why we're going to underproduce. But anyway, um, so instead of 50 sulfuric acid per minute, doubling it will be 100 sulfuric acid per minute. These 125 go to 250 in case you well. Actually, we are overproducing. Um, instead of underproducing. 
Um, and then we're going to be needing, uh, oh, actually this produces 100 sulfuric acid and consumes 400 sulfuric acid, right? Um, it also will be consuming 150 concrete and 500 uranium per minute. Now, in these sorts of production lines, you actually have to calculate the net sulfuric acid demand because essentially um, 400 sulfuric acid gets you the encased uranium cell and gets you another 100 sulfuric acid on the input, right? So on the um, output side, you actually need to go, okay, you need 400 on the input, but then you actually um, get a quarter of that back, right? So you have to subtract that from the sort of uh, gross demand for sulfuric acid, right? Then of course that produces you another bunch of uh, sulfuric acid that you have to subtract and another bunch and so on. So this never sort of ends, but um, you can at some point go, okay, that's, um, that's as far as we'll go and we'll just sort of overproduce a little bit of sulfuric acid. But yeah, the net demand here is going to be 266 sulfuric acid, um, which is good because it's actually slightly lower than the gross demand would have actually been under 400. Um, okay, so let's actually connect this up as well. Um, so yeah, in case industrial, um, so this takes uranium, um, which we, is basically the raw material, concrete, which we'll look at um, later, um, sulfuric acid, which we'll look at now, um, and then it produces sulfuric acid as well as encased uranium cell. So this is the output side, so let's connect that up first. Uh, we need one of these mergers, and again, just placing that one meter in from the foundation and lining up with that. Um, and then we need to lift this up um, and connect these together. So that's now the output. Um, uh, actually, we haven't quite done this. Okay, and then we also need to connect the sulfuric acid output here. Um, so let's do that. And then we'll go on to the other side. Here. So this is the input side. Of course, on the input, um, we need sulfuric acid, concrete, and uranium. So this is the sulfuric acid, um, and then I don't know. Okay, this is the concrete, and then the top will be the uranium. So let's put that together. We of course have to start with those first because they are just um, the one at the top. So one, two, three. Uh, one, two. So we have another auto save incoming. Let's see if we can't get ahead of it. All right, so um, let's let that pass. Then we need to connect this in. And we can also hook these input lines in. So you can see that the uranium is now getting delivered in and the concrete is also getting delivered in. And then we just have to connect the um, sulfuric acid. And of course, we also need to make sure that the power is connected. Okay. Um, Pretty sure it already is. And then we should see this starting to produce. So it's actually getting the sulfuric acid delivered into it. Now it's going to struggle with that because of course we're not producing enough sulfuric acid, but you can see that it's actually producing um, here quite well, but then of course we're going to have only a trickle of sulfuric acid actually make its way down here, so they're not going to be able to produce for now because we're not making enough sulfuric acid. Okay, so the next step is to produce more sulfuric acid. You can see a glimpse of what we're doing with the uranium waste on this side. So this is what it looks like on the front, by the way. So the output sulfuric acid or the input sulfuric acid is actually connected to the output and then we have <coughs> this sulfuric acid which is connected down to the next level down or maybe a couple of levels down i don't quite remember which is where we have our sulfuric acid production and this is what the front of um, this looks like so we're getting um, the encased industrial beam from below 
um, and then some of the other materials are actually coming in uh, from the back here. Um, I don't know specifically what this material is at the top, but um, yeah. So they, uh, the materials get sort of exchanged back and forth on this line on each level and any materials that go between levels get exchanged sort of through the floor um, either at this location or sometimes on this location as well. Um, so that's how it works um, in terms of getting the materials back and forth. So let's make our way down. Oh, I should also say we've already um, been producing enough um, uranium and all the other raw materials. Um, so the uranium mine actually happens to be over there in the corner, which is already producing at the required rate. Now you can see um, this is the sulfuric acid pipe and it's not on this level, it actually goes down one more level, um, but yeah. So one thing we actually need to check, um, so the net demand here is, um, is only 266 sulfuric acid, so our pipelines will be fine, they're going to be able to transport enough of the material. Okay, so let's go down to this level. Um, here we go. So the sulfuric acid production is just at the back here. So the sulfuric acid is done in a refinery. It requires water and sulfur. So let's take a quick look at that. So currently the net demand is 133. So no, instead it's 266. I'm actually also going to double this input preemptively. So the net demand is actually 383. Um, no, 3, yep, yeah, 386. 86 sulfuric so acid production. We're going to overproduce a little bit, which is fine. Um, and yeah, we're going to be putting down eight refineries um, that consume 400 sulfuric. So so uh, that produce 400 sulfuric acid per minute and consume 400 water per minute and 400 sulfur. Now we're already getting enough sulfur delivered here, so we don't have to worry about that, but we will have to worry about the, um, so yeah, up here you can see uh, we're already producing 480 sulfur per minute at least. I don't know exactly how much we're producing, but I know it's more than 400 and it's likely to be 480 sulfur. Okay, so this is how this production line works. So we get sulfur shipped up here from the storage level below. We get the water shipped in here and then the sulfur output sort of wraps around here and goes to the top. Okay, so let's look at the um, sulfur production. So this already has the recipe selected. So all we have to do here is just connect the output here so let's do that and then we also have to go to the input side um, okay I need to let me through here no oops what all right I'll have to go around the back the power pole is in the way okay so yeah, on the front we have the sulfur being shipped through in the bottom and the um, water shipped through at the top. So we just need a splitter here, of course with the input line on the back there. So let's connect this in. Make sure that the power is connected and then we just have to connect the water um, into this as well and then this should start to produce. So we're getting a little bit of water here, but of course we're not producing enough water um, at the bottom, so we'll have to change that. Come on, get through there, there you go. Right, so yeah, that's how the sulfur production works. So now let's go one level down again, and we'll take a quick look at the... So this is where all of the... Um, material arrives 
um, and we ship a lot of it in via trains. We actually have two train tracks. One of them just ships in coal and copper, and the other one ships in most of the other materials that we're actually getting by a train. Um, some of the slots are not used because I'm actually able to source the material locally, but when I built the train, I actually included um, those slots in case I needed them. But yeah, you can see that the various materials, limestone, coal, and so on, are all available here. In case of coal, we actually have uh, 240 coal per minute um, coming in because we will actually need a lot of it. These are just materials, uh, spare construction material um, containers. Um, but yeah, um, let's see, where's the sulfur? Here's the sulfur. So we're getting that, um, uh, we're sourcing it locally from right up there. So we don't really have to worry about that. Now, let's go down to the water level. The water demand, so let's map this is done. The water demand is actually, um, okay, so net demand is uh, 120, and then of course we have 400 for the sulfur, and then we actually produce 120 again from one of the production lines, um, and then we consume another 360 so in total this is going to be um, 600 760 which is more than we can carry in one water pipe so we'll actually have to find a way to split um, the water which we will do down here the other thing that we have to be careful with the water is to actually make sure that we produce exactly the right amount because we have some water actually being um, put back into the system um, so we don't want um, to actually press too much water into our production lines because then they're going to stop working okay so these produce 120 water per minute we need to um, put down 760 so we actually need seven water extractors for that so um, five would be 600 six would be 720 seven would be um, 840 um, and then, yeah, one of these needs to produce at, um, instead of 17%, at 34%, um, so that we actually produce um, about 760.4 water per minute. So that's just slightly overproducing. I think the 0.4 won't hurt us, um, but uh, yeah, that's just a limitation in terms of how much we can uh, control the actual production rates. So then the other thing that we need to do here is that we actually need to connect up this second water um, to be lifted up because of course only 600 water can fit into any given um, any given pipe. So yeah, we have three over there. Oops, there's an auto save. and another three water producers over here and then this one is currently set to 17 percent so we need to actually set this to uh, 34 percent if we can manage to get it there there we go so that produces 40.8 um, so yeah we have 720 from six that are producing at full and then we have another 40.8 so this is actually 40 760.8 um, that are being that's being produced by um, this guy here. So that should satisfy all the demand for the water. Um, so that's uh, um, sort of one of the first end-to-end -end things taken care of, right? So we are now producing enough uh, electromagnet, no, um, enough uranium fuel rods, although we're not able to produce all of it yet because of the um, industrial beam and the electromagnetic control rod so we'll look at those next we're producing enough um, encased uranium cells now um, all of the inputs are taken care of here we're producing enough sulfuric acid and we're producing enough water um, as well so i need to do a little bit of planning and then we will look at the next production line be back shortly Welcome back. Um, we have just gone through 
quite a bit of effort to put together the electromagnetic control rod production line. So now we will um, show you how that all came together. So the first step here is that we need both AI limiters um, uh, sorry, no, that, that we need to produce electric magnetic control rods. Currently we have five assemblers, so we need to take that to 10 because the net demand is going to be 28 from um, these guys. And I know that the other demand here, which comes from the uranium waste product, uh, uh, yeah, uh, processing is going to go to 12 for a total of 40 electromagnetic control rods per minute. Um, so we're going to make exactly 40 in 10 assemblers um, using 40 AI limiters and 60 status per minute. Right, so we have the production line right here. So the existing production line is one, two, three, four, five are producing and we have one, two, three, four, five new um, assemblers that are producing electromagnetic controls. Of course they use status and AI limiters um, as the input and of course we will show you how to build those. Now in this particular case we have two inputs so we have a pretty standard um, way of injecting the input here. which just involves connecting these things like so. And I've of course connected everything else already. So let's hook this guy up. Okay, so now this should be getting everything that it needs to start producing electromagnetic controllers and then we just have to aggregate the output here. Let's just make sure that when this produces that we get a whole bunch of them coming back here um, and then we should be good to go uh, any minute now. Okay, I saw a few come through so it's exactly what we want to see. Um, so that's good and then of course they make their way. Now in this case I wanted to use the second slot, oh, sorry the first slot, well this is the first slot on the ground and then the one up is the second slot because there's actually quite a lot of materials going back and forth. So this is the technique that I used rather than like a sort of ramp, I used to, I went up by six and then down by four again. So you can see the electromagnetic control rods are being produced and then they of course get transported all the way back. Um, and into the production of the uh, uranium fuel rod, nuclear fuel rods, right over here. So they get lifted up a little bit um, because they have to be split and then they get lifted up here and also split into this production line here that then um, produces the uranium fuel rods. Okay, so for the input of the electromagnetic control rods, we of course have AI limiters and status. So let's take a look at the AI limiters as a first step. As you can see, AI limiters and status. So AI limiters, let's see here, are produced using quick wire and copper sheet, right? So let's mark this as done. So 100 copper sheet and 400 quick wire currently produce 20 AI limiters per minute and four assemblers. So now we have to actually go to eight assemblers. And then of course we'll be producing 40 AI limiters. And that's the demand here. And we will be needing 800 quick wire per minute and 200 copper sheet per minute. Now the fact that this is 800 quick wire per minute means that our Mark 5 belts will no longer do 
because they can only carry 720. So we will have to find a way of taking the last little bit of the um, quick wire and actually sort of doubling up the conveyor belts. All right, and we will actually see evidence of that right here. So what we've done, um, okay, so this is the copper, this is the quick wire. And then if we go down here, we can actually see that um, at one part here, we actually essentially refresh the quick wire input rate um, by injecting a little bit more quick wire into the production line. So that's sort of how you get more than 800 into the production. So right here we see copper sheet, quick wire, AI limiters. So again, we have two inputs, so we use a pretty standard um, mechanism here to get the inputs in. Okay, right after the order save completes. This through, let's connect this into here, and this through here, and this through here, and then connect that into the input, and then we also connect this into the input. Right. Um, now, for some reason, the copper sheet is not arriving here. Oh, it just takes some time. I think that's fine. We, of course, need to increase the input of input rate of the copper sheet as well to meet this whole new demand. Right, and now we also need to connect the output right here. So this is the output line. Oops. Okay, I got this wrong. So like this, let's check. Okay, good. And then we're producing the new AI limiter. So you can see the copper sheet is slowly coming in here. Um, but yeah, it'll take a little bit of time for for this copper sheet to actually start producing at, or these AI limiters to be produced at a higher rate because we are yet to connect more copper into the mix. Okay. So one of the inputs is of course this quick wire and we'll focus on this quick wire first. Okay, let's mark this as done. Um, so yeah, we have to deal with this in a minute, but we'll go all the way up to this quick wire production here. So currently the net demand is 400, but actually the net demand is now going to be 800. So we're going to go to four, not 147 constructors, just 14. And of course we're going to be producing about 840 quick wire per minute. Um, making use of 168 Ethereum ingot per minute. And like I said before, 840 is smaller than the 720. So the last sort of four of these, we will need to connect into a separate belt, um, which of course we've done right here. Um, sorry, the last two, because actually each one produces 60, uh, which we've done right here. But of course on the input line we're actually fine because it's only 168 Caterium ingot per minute, so it's not going to be a problem. All right, so this is a pretty simple constructor-based input-output line. So we just need to put one splitter in here. Um, connect the belts through. Okay, make sure that this recipe is working fine, which it is, and then we just need to connect the output here as well. And we should be getting a lot more um, criterion wire getting delivered into this production line. Okay, so these are all pretty straightforward and, and sort of chained together one after the other, and you'll see that at the front here we actually um, throwing in basically a full belt of this stuff into the mix, which is going to be absorbed by this production line, but of course not yet because um, we also need to improve the copper sheet production. Now, the last step for the Caterium line is, okay, so let's mark 
this is done. So of course, the um, smelting, so the net demand is no longer 84, it's 168. Okay, let's make that right, 168. So we need to go to 12 smelters here. Um, and we're going to be producing 180 Caterium ingot, which is probably a little bit more than we actually need, from about 400, 540 Caterium ore per minute. So the key number here is that this is less than 720, it's also less than 600. Um, so we should be fine in terms of our input and output belt to keep them just um, a single one. In this case, I sort of changed the orientation of this one because we actually have, um, what is this, something here, I don't know, our water um, coming down, which is I think some overflow water. Um, so yeah, we, we just sort of, instead of going the usual sort of like this, we just went straight through. Um, and the Caterium ore is of course being lifted from somewhere at the back here, um, up and onto this level from the um, receiving, um, sorry, the transportation level. So um, that's all connected already. So let's go over here again, the smelters are Fairly straightforward input-output kind of a arrangement um, with a single input and a single output. So let's connect this through, connect that in, we'll make sure that this is all working, which it is. Um, and then we just have to put in our output line here. Uh, okay, preferably in the right location as well. Okay, so let's put that through here. And now we can see that we have plenty of more Caterium actually being produced. Okay, so that's the um, Caterium ore processing done. Okay, so now let's go and take a look at the stator production. So now we need to actually go and find where that's being done. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. Okay, we've managed to find the status. Um, in this case, the currently the demand generation 20 copper India producing copper sheet. Okay, that's the wrong one. Um, okay, here we go. Currently the production rate or the demand that we are seeing from the lithium and the control rods was 30 status. Now of course it's 60. So we're going to have to go to 12 assemblers here and go to 60 status. They then of course need 500 wire per minute and 160 steel pipe per minute. Okay. And this is a kind of usual two input line. So let's see where we get this. Okay, up to here would have been the previous production line. This is all the new production line. So let's connect this in. We just need to switch this guy to there and then lift this to there. Okay, great. Let's connect this in. And then this can go into there. The things that I haven't done here um, that I just noticed. So you can see that it's now producing. The things I haven't done here is actually connect these things in. So let's quickly finish that off. Um, otherwise, we're not going to be actually producing any of these materials. Okay. So um, this is now getting both of the inputs and outputs. And then we can connect together the little bit of out, the new output here. So let's do that as well. Connect this into there, this into there, and this into there. So I don't see any status being produced, but they are produced relatively slowly, and I can just see one go by there. Okay. So the next part of the production line that we will follow. Of course, this takes um, wire and steel pipe as the input. 
Um, so as you can see, the wire is being produced right here. So we'll take a look at that production line next. Okay, so let's map this as done. Okay, so currently the net demand for wire was 250. Now it's actually 500. Um, so we need to go to 18 constructors right here that are going to be producing 540 wire per minute, um, making use of 100 and, no, 270 copper ingot per minute. Okay, and of course this is a pretty straightforward production line in a constructor. They just take copper ingot and produce wire. All right, so let's go back. Words. and take a bit of a look all right so yeah pretty straightforward production line just a single input output so we'll connect this through here connect this in and then this will start to produce which is excellent and then we will also um, connect in the output Now we have ink boosted our wire production, which is excellent news. Okay, um, and then we can also actually put this guy in the right place. So we are. Sometimes a bit hard to get it exactly right. All right, come on. I think that's right. Sometimes you just have to figure out which angle will tell you, make it easy to put in. All right, I think that's right. Yeah, okay, very good. Now, the next step then, of course, will be the copper ingot production. Now, whilst I was over here and producing the various things. We'll actually also take a look at the other copper um, requirements. Okay, so, yeah, we've done this step. Right, now we are down to this copper ingot. In the case of the copper ingot, currently the net demand is um, from a range of places. So the one that we were just looking at went to 270 and then the copper sheet production which we'll take a look at in a minute as well actually will demand 440 now so that's this one which is right next to this production line and then for another uh, production line actually that's not going to change although we will well no this part isn't going to change actually this is the demand from the aluminum alkyd aluminum sheet which we're already way over producing and there's a good reason for that that's so that we actually have some of them available because they actually are the material for the um, conveyor belts mark 5 but yeah we are there's only actually demand for 10 which is going to go to 20 and this needs about 60 copper ingots so this demand here actually isn't going to go up um, now if we add all of this up that's actually 770 in terms of the um, copper ingot demand, right? So 40 plus 60 is 500, and yet these 270. Um, so in reality, we actually did go to 28 smelters because I forgot that this didn't actually double. So we're actually going to be producing 840 copper ingot from 840 copper ore. Now, the fact that this is 840, um, means that we actually need to double up our input lines um, and what you can see uh, right here is that we are actually getting two copper lines the second one gets transported all the way to the back there and then we essentially refreshes this line once we have exhausted all of the demand and then on the output line of the copper ingot we actually have two lines as well um, one of these is sort of, um, one of these, so this is the 60 demand, goes down to where we are producing the alkyl aluminum sheet. 
um, this one gets passed straight into the copper sheet production and actually um, the second la uh, level of the output here or the first level depending on if you're in America um, actually just refreshes this one and then we also have the rest of the copper ingot just go back to the copper wire production. Alright, so let's go and do what's necessary to actually double this production. So yeah, this is a fairly straightforward input-output kind of single input, single output kind of a deal. So we'll just connect the input here. Right, um, and that's starting to produce. And then of course we have the output right here, which we can connect in as well. Okay, and the lifting is actually done for, so the second line here is actually done for what the last four of them, because they produce about 30, so the last 120 actually make their way onto the second level. Okay, so that finishes this production line as well. Um, since this is right next to where we are right now, we're also going to look at the copper sheet. So currently um, the net demand is 106, so we're going to go to 212 instead. Um, and of course we will be going to 22 constructors, demanding 220 copper, uh, producing 220 copper sheet and demanding 440 um, copper ingot, which of course matches the demand that we had noted up here. Um, so yeah, we have to go to 22 constructors, which is quite a lot. Um, but the input and output is actually less than um, 720, so we don't actually need second level. Um, so this again is a fairly straightforward single input, single output kind of arrangement. So let's hook this in. You can see that this is now starting to produce. Um, so we will connect this together. Um, I think this is right. Nope. Yet. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we have also boosted the production of the copper sheet. All right. So, in terms of the stator production, um, copying it. I'm just trying to find it. Okay, here we go. So in terms of this one here, we've taken care of the wire input requirement, but we haven't yet taken care of the steel input requirement. The steel input requirement is actually, like 160 steel pipe looks innocent, but it's actually quite a lot of material. Um, this is one of the big complex parts of this whole production line. So let's go to the, I'm gonna go to the location where the steel is being produced and then I'll show you and we'll sort of step through how all of this happens. So we have found the steel pipe production. It's on the same level. So in terms of the steel pipe, um, there's actually going to be demand from elsewhere and um, that demand is going to be coming from the another one of the inputs that we will have to do, which is the encased industrial beam. Um, so that demand will go to 168, uh, 160, and then this um, demand here will go to 336, I believe. Um, yep. um, so we're going to have to take this to 26 constructors producing um, 200, 400, 520. This doesn't seem right. Um, oops, I think there's an autosave going on. Um, 20 steel pipe 
we will have 26 constructors. Yeah, it's actually going to be producing a lot. Oh, I hadn't added this up yet. So 336 plus 160. So if we just add 60 here, it's 396, so it's 496. Right, let's just make sure that that's right. 336 plus 160. Oops. 496, 496. Um, so yeah, we're going to go to 26 constructors, which of course are going to be producing 520 steel pipe per minute, and they're going to need um, 600 plus 180, 780 steel per minute, which is quite a lot of steel. Right. In fact, it is so much steel that we actually will be exceeding the 720 that can be delivered by a single belt, um, which is why you see this other belt that is also actually um, going to inject some steel into this. So let's go back to where we have our um, steel, ingot product, um, steel pipe production. Okay, so fairly straightforward production line as well. Um, actually, this would be the output side. So let's get this through. Currently not producing because it's not getting steel ingots, but we can improve that situation. Okay. Good. Um, disconnect it in here. All right. So now these are all producing and able to um, produce output. Um, so as you can see, the you know last a lot of these actually get a new steel input line. Um, and let's just make sure that the ah yes. So this is where we had already saved up a lot of this demand. Um, so that's why it's sort of clogged up. Okay. And then the steel production, of course, happens right here. Um, now, in this case, if we look at the steel production, so we can actually mark this as done. So the net demand here is actually going to be um, 780 and then 240. Going to a total of 1020. So of course, if you add the 40 here, we're at 820, and then you add the 200, then we're at 1020. So we're going to have to go to 26 foundries. 26 foundries that are going to be demand producing um, 585 times 2, 1140. No, 70. Just a lot. But, um, hang on, where is it? So each one produces 45. So 26 times 45 is 1170 actually. So my maths, oh no, I got it right. Um, okay, 1170, um, which is of course a little bit more than is needed. Um, it's probably one more than we actually needed to put down, but we have it now, so I'm going to leave it in place. Now, this means that both the input and the output lines are actually more than 720, um, and the coal demand is actually one of the highest uh, material demands in total that we have, being a total of um, 1,430, which is just a little bit more than the iron ore, because it's actually being used to produce the aluminum as well. Um, so this is where on the input line, of course on the output line we've already looked at, um, on the input line we have um, quite a complex arrangement actually, um, because what we had to do, because of course all of these lines are occupied, um, so I couldn't make these two another coal and iron ore, it would have been good to have another four meters of clearance up here, but I didn't, um, so what we did instead is that we have run the new or additional iron ore and coal on one level above 
and once the 720 ran out, which is around here, we actually have the new coal and iron ore get shipped down from above. Right. So this is the input side, so let's connect the input side here. One, two, three. Alright, and then we can connect this part. And then we should also connect this part. Okay, so this is now going to be producing steel. Then we just need to connect the output here. Okay. So let's do this. Now, of course, the output is already doubled up and it's actually in the same location as the new input materials are coming down because, of course, input output here for one iron ore, we get one steel ingot out. So. Now we have connected all of this production here and it should be starting to be consumed. Um, now some of this production here is idle because we haven't quite finished all of the other doubling that we have to do. So um, in the end it'll all be used. Um, it's just in this construction period um, it might not be completely used. Okay, so the other location that this steel goes to is actually um, down here. So for another purpose, we will actually need, um, if I go back to the steel production, we can mark this as complete. We will actually need steel ingots, uh, sorry, steel beams for something else. I can't quite remember for what, but um, I'm sure we'll find it. So. The net demand is going to be 36, so we will go to four constructors, producing a total of 60 steel beam per minute, which is of course way too much. So I made another little mistake here in terms of the number of constructors actually put down, but that's okay. Um, it's only a small mistake. So we probably only really needed one more, but we have two more because I just went through every production line and I doubled the um, number of um, buildings that we're actually building it. So that was sort of the pre-build that we had done already. Okay, so let's connect this up. Again, straight single input, single output kind of arrangement. Um, steel beams actually down, uh, like, like they use a lot more um, input materials than they produce in terms of output, in terms just in terms of quantity. Um, but yeah, so now we have also taken care of the steel. So we should now be actually able to produce um, all of these um, electromagnetic control rods because we have actually connected in um, the AI limiters um, and we have done the stator production line. And we've also added a few other things as well. Um, that were just sort of, um, you know, convenient things for us to also take care of whilst we were in a given location. Now, uh, the next step would actually be to look at the, so if we look at this uranium fuel rod, so yeah, this uranium fuel rod production, we have now taken care of the encased uranium cell. We have taken care of the elect electromagnetic control rod so next we will actually look at this encased industrial beam. So I'm going to go prepare those production lines and then we'll step you through it. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, we are back now. We are going to be focusing on this um, industrial beam production, right? So the demand was 8.4, now it's going to be 16.8 per minute. Um, of course, from these down here in the uranium fuel rod. Um, so we're going to need 12 assemblers that will be producing 48, uh, which is actually a lot. I don't think that's uh, what, hang on, let's check that. Are we actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
they produce four per minute. Yeah, okay. So I'm, I must have done a mistake here as well. We didn't actually need this much of it. Um, okay, anyway, we're going to still be connecting it up. So in 12 assemblers, we're going to be producing 48 in case industrial beam, of course, using 20, 240 concrete per minute, and going to be consuming 168, 320, 336 steel pipe per minute. So let's mark this as done because we are about to do it. All right, so pretty well. This is a two input producers, um, one output kind of arrangement. Right. So the reason that we're using this one is, is that it's actually slightly more efficient. So this is an alternate recipe. Um, you end up using slightly less um, uh, steel ingots. Um, the other one, of course, here is the steel beam, but it actually takes four steel ingots to make one steel beam. So this is essentially 16 steel ingots, whereas this one, it, it only takes about one and a bit of steel ingot to produce one pipe. So this is a lot lower steel demand. So that's why I usually use this recipe. Of course, the alternate recipes can be found using my scanning hard drives, which are available throughout the world. Um, although it is kind of random which ones you end up getting. Um, they just do. deleted what I just built. All right, um, let's connect this through. Now, I'm glad that all the mistakes I've made are sort of overproducing rather than underproducing. But yeah, now this is working, so it's going to be making encased industrial beams here, um, which is exactly what we want. So now we have actually figured out every single, or oh, not yet, so, right, so this concrete, um, we've already taken care of the steel pipes, so now we have to take care of this concrete, right? So we actually have to um, change this. So the in case industrial beam demand is going to be 240, and then um, another demand, which we'll be looking at later, is going to be 150. Um, and then uh, also another demand is going to go to 240. So this is actually going to be 660. Um, is that right? 240 plus 150 plus 240 plus 150 plus 240. No, it's going to be 630. Oh yeah, of course, because it was 315. Okay, and we're going to be doing this in 42 constructors that are going to be producing 630 concrete per minute, making use of 1,890 limestone per minute. Now, this is more than 1440, so you actually need three input belts. Um, so before I said that coal is one of the most demanded inputs, it's actually not, it's limestone. So you can see that we have three belts here feeding limestone to the back um, so that now we only need one output belt because um, the limestone production is actually a three for one so three limestone to one concrete sorry the concrete production is three for one three limestone for one concrete um, we'd already connected quite a lot of it in so we just have to go here we need a splitter Great. So now this is producing concrete, and then of course in the output we just need one output line, so that's kind of simple. Okay, pretty sure I got this wrong. Right. Um, okay, so that's now all producing concrete. So we have done uh, this and yeah, we've already taken care of this. We actually have um, three Mark three miners that are coming in one on top of normal node and two on top of pure nodes. 
and the one on the normal node is scaled to 600 per minute and the ones on the pure node actually scale to 720 per minute. So we're actually getting just over 2000 limestone delivered here per minute. Of course it's a little bit more than we need because we don't actually need all of these industrial beams I don't think, but um, anyway. Alright, so then the concrete actually goes to a couple of locations. First it goes to these case industrial beams and then it gets lifted up for some other stuff. So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at the um, uranium fuel production uh, which should be available right here and we'll just make sure that it's all working because that was the whole point of this first part of the guide so let's see these guys nope these are just um, processing this stuff uh, which we also have to boost now Okay, so this is all producing, so you can see it actually also takes concrete, so that was one of the other um, demands that we had. So let's go, uh, actually I want to be on the other side of this, so uh, actually that's producing in cases of uranium cell, come on. Uh, I think these guys are producing, let's check this, so 1.2 per minute, okay. Yeah, so we are overproducing quite a bit in terms of the case industrial beam, which is fine. Um, so this has everything that it needs, which is good to see. All right, and then we can actually look all the way back. Um, and you can see that some of them are not quite producing. So let's take a look at why they're not producing, um, just to sort of make sure that we have appropriately scaled everything. All right, so this is missing electromagnetic control rods. Is that the case for everything else? Now, the one of the problems for the electromagnetic control rod is that the production rate is actually very low. So even if you have all the rates that you need, it's actually going to take a long time for um, all of the storage to fill up of all of these because at the start of them they're going to have like way too much in their storage uh, in, on the input buffer I should say right these are seven I mean that one's fine this one's going to have like 65 right so it's actually going to take a while for all of these to start producing because the electromagnetic control rods are not all producing so um, but yeah I'll just go through the production lines make sure that everything is working fine and then we'll check back in with you Okay, I found the mistake, which you probably already knew about. Um, we haven't connected these in. So that was actually causing these electromagnetic controllers not to be produced, which then of course would cause the um, production line of the uranium fuel cell um, to not be producing because it's not going to be getting the those rods at the rates that it needs. So that's, I think, a really good accomplishment, what we've done here. Um, I'll keep an eye out on all of the various production lines. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take another look um, sort of towards the end and make sure that all of these are then producing. Um, but yeah. Now, the next step is actually for us to look at the um, processing of the uranium waste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go through and make sure that we have everything that we need and then um, we'll take you through how the waste production works. So I'll be back with that update. All right, we have prepared everything. So the way that we'll approach this is we'll see where the waste finally goes um, and then we'll work sort of backwards um, so I'm, I'll just sort of show you one of the plutonium fuel cells actually make its way into the um, awesome sink um, out of these uh, manufactories 
there should be one AI so on. So yeah, you can see that these plutonium cells go in here, and then of course we get a huge number of these coupons, half a million per minute. Um, so we actually will improve that quite a lot. So to produce those plutonium fuel rods, what um, what we need is regular auto saves, uh, <laughs> as well as in case plutonium cell. Um, steel beams, which we're already producing, electromagnetic control rods, which we're already producing, and then these heat sinks, um, which we actually haven't quite finished yet. So we will also actually need to do that. But for now, we'll just show you um, this piece. So this, this is the output side from these. So let's connect this whole thing up. So yeah, now this is the output side, um, and then on the input side, uh, things are interesting, especially because it's hard for me to jump over there. All right, so this actually has four inputs. So the way that we connect those up is that one goes on the ground, and then the next one is three up, then the next one is four up, and then the last one is five up, and then we delete everything underneath and then we start from the top and hook these things in all right and then we just have to connect these through to the next one Okay, um, and then we also have to put these lifters on here, and then you should see that these guys should start to receive material. So they're getting everything other than this encased plutonium cell, which of course we haven't been producing as much, and these electromagnetic control rods, um, which also are quite intensive to produce. So they'll take a time; they'll take time to actually build up. Um, so, then you might say, well, how do you produce these in case plutonium cells? Well, that's what happens over here. So the way that in case plutonium cells are produced is that we need these plutonium pallets um, and concrete. So concrete we've already taken care of in the past, um, so we don't need to worry about that. But of course, we will need to look at how to produce the um, plutonium pallets. So, Let's connect this output here and then this is a dual input kind of an arrangement so very sort of standard uh, we just connect it like this all right and then we connect things into here one uh, and then we connect things into here so then we can take a look here we're already getting concrete in here, which is great, exactly what we need. Um, the plutonium pallet is, again, quite resource intensive to produce, so we're not necessarily going to have a lot of that. You can see that even this one here that has been connected for a long time doesn't have a lot of them. Um, but yeah, so that's this step. Now, this next step is actually the first time where you see uranium waste. Um, and that's in these um, particle accelerators that we have connected here. So these are the first ones that actually take uranium waste on the input, which is um, how you can see that we are actually going to be cleaning up after ourselves. Um, all right, so let's connect this through. There's actually a second input of uranium waste that we take, but we'll look at that in a minute. So these particle accelerators, um, just have a fairly straightforward two input arrangement. So I just need to connect those inputs through. And um, right at the top there, you'll be able to see the waste um, coming through. All right, and I forgot to connect this through. 
so yeah, now we are starting to process this uranium waste and this non-fissile uranium. So you haven't seen this non-fissile uranium yet, so let's show you how that gets made, which is another material that actually requires these, um, this nuclear waste as an input. Get rid of this. Um, Alright, yeah, you can see that's starting to be produced over here, and then in the end we'll take a look at this building here for um, some increased production there. Alright, so let's look at this thing at the end. This is also another somewhat complicated um, production line to put together. This also actually produces, so if we look at this, right, so it takes uranium waste, silica, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and actually produces a little bit of water. So you have to make sure that you sink this water. I usually just connect it back into the water supply line and deduct it from the water that we actually need to produce overall. So that's usually how I do it. But yeah, so this takes uranium waste, it takes silica, which you haven't seen, um, which we need to go and produce, it takes nitric acid, which we also haven't seen, so we need to go look at how that gets produced. And then it also gets sulfuric acid, which we've seen um, plenty of times before. All right, so let's hook up this piece. So yeah, let's get this output. Actually, yeah, we need to start with this one here because it goes up. All right, so we'll connect this in. Right, and then we need to connect this, collect this water output, uh, which is right here. Um, Mr. Quickland, we're actually producing the tutorial right now. So we are just in the last little stages of explaining uh, how the nuclear waste is processed. So it's all right don't have to apologize for interrupting. Now look at this, and we actually find another mistake that I made where I haven't connected, um, connected the water output, which is good that we spotted that. I wonder what all the other mistakes are that I've made. But um, I'm sure at some point we'll spot it. All right, um, so that's the water output, and now let's look, take a bit of a look at the input. Um, Good. All right. Um, so we, this one actually has four inputs. So we will put this one here, and then this needs to go one, two, three, four, five. So pretty high up. Uh, so we'll connect this through. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Well, I will actually because I made this mistake. So it's six actually this side one two three four five six so let's connect this we can also get rid of that then it should be level good All right, let's connect this through and then connect this all right you can see that it's happily starting to consume some of this nuclear waste Right, so now we need to connect the pipes in. Um, all right. Uh, here we go. Unfortunately, no guidance, but that's all right. No snapping. All right, so now you can see that this is starting to produce. It doesn't have any nitric acid yet, so let's take a look at this one here. But yeah, it has all the input materials. So now what we need to do is go look at the next stage. Actually, I need to show you this part as well, which I haven't shown you. Right, so we've already looked at this. So we boosted this to eight manufacturers, producing two fuel rods per minute, um, requiring 20 heat sinks, um, 12 electromagnetic control rod, 36 steel beam, and 60 in case returning cell. And yep, we've taken care of 
these already. This one we actually need to look at in a minute, so I'll just mark it as not being done. And we'll take a look at this in a minute as well. Um, we have taken care of this, uh, which we were just looking at. So we've put down eight blenders instead of four, not 84, um, that consume 120 or produce 120 water per minute and 400 non-fissile uranium and consume a bunch of sulfuric acid, a bunch of nitric acid, a bunch of silica, and of course our uranium waste. And then we've also looked at this one here. So we've gone to uh, four particle colliders um, producing 120 plutonium pellet per minute from 100 uranium waste and 400 non-fissile uranium. Something to keep in mind actually here is that you have to treat this as sort of one unit in terms of looking at the uranium waste because you can see that this is actually consuming 400 uranium waste overall. Otherwise, this is a little bit complicated to figure out. Um, but yeah, so we're producing 280 uranium waste actually. Um, so we're going to be able to process a lot more uranium waste than is actually being produced, which I think is a really good situation to be in. And yes, we also took care of this. So we now have 12 assemblers producing um, 60 encased plutonium cell from 240 concrete and 120 plutonium pallets as well. All right, so the next step is actually, um, oh, we've already looked at this, so that's all good. All right, let's slide through here. The next step is that we need to follow this um, nitric acid back and look at how that ends up getting produced. Um, okay, that's actually on a lower floor. So let's go down one level. Uh, actually, it'll be down two levels it, because it's one of the sort of raw fluid production lines. This looks so cool with all the materials going up and down. I get a lot. All right, here we go. So this is the um, nitric acid production. So that gets done in a blender. So let's take a quick look at that. Um, so down here, um, so we have taken, we have, we had two blenders. Now we need to go to four blenders that produce 120 nitric acid per minute. Um, because of course that's the demand down here and then it's going to be consuming 40 iron plates, 120 water, which we've already taken care of, and 480 nitrogen gas, um, which we're already producing up here. So that's all good. And then, yeah, we also need to take a quick look at these and double them to um, two constructors and two smelters as well um, that are producing 60 iron, 30 iron plates, of course, consuming the 60 iron and then consuming 60 iron ore. So that all happens on this level here. And then, of course, uh, we need to connect the output. So the only output on these is the nitric acid, which is very handy. So let's connect that up. Uh, right here. Where is it? Here it is. That didn't work out at all. Ah, okay, maybe this will be it. Right, that will work. And then on the input, it takes um, iron plate. So that's this one. I had already actually put that one in. Um, I didn't need to, but I did anyway. So let's connect this in. And then it also takes um, water and nitrogen gas on the input. So let's connect these two together. Uh, there and there. Uh, did we get this right? No. There we go. Okay, so that's now getting all of the materials that it needs to produce nitric acid which is really good. And then we also have to produce a little bit of um, iron here. So that's, or iron plates, so let's put 
that together. And so that needs to go through here. And then this is going to start to produce, of course. And then we have to collect the output. Oops, that's wrong. Okay, and then over here we need to be producing iron plates. So we need to put in a splitter again. Alright, oops. Okay, I can't afford that. However, there is actually, we will take a look at this production line in a minute. There is um, our clad over here, so it's all good. So let me go and collect some of that. Because we actually overproduce the aluminum, because it's easier to overproduce than not. And it's also kind of handy to have um, the conveyor belt material just available in a given location. Okay, grab one more actually, and then we can put this back, collect one more. All right, and I also have to remember to do the heat sinks. Let's get back to the iron ore production. Look at all of these production lines. I'm very proud of this build. It's, um, it's very complex. Right, we got this wrong. Merger. All right, let's make sure that everything is all good here. Okay, that's connected. All right, so now they're getting fed with all of the materials. One of the other things that we also have to look at is the um, aluminum production. So this is all taken care of now. Now, where was the aluminum production? Okay, down here. The aluminum production already produces um, 180 outlet. So this demand is only going to go to 20, right? Because this heat sink production is going to require 20 if we double it. Um, but we already have plenty of it. So I'm not going to actually change this production. But yeah, it's a pretty standard aluminium build. Um, it requires water and bauxite, or bauxite, whatever, however that's pronounced, on the input. It produces silica on the output. Now, I know that we need silica as well, um, somewhere up there, but um, we actually end up dumping it on this level because it's easier and more reliable to just use uh, quartz. Uh, but yeah, and then it produces aluminum solution on the output, which um, we take into this one um, blender, no, uh, what is this called? This is called a refinery and produce aluminum scrap. This also produces water, so there's a bit of a feedback loop in terms of the output of the water, um, where we have to connect it back into our water production. And then I actually make use of an alternate recipe where I can produce aluminum ingots from aluminum scrap in smelters. Um, I think by default you have to do something else, but um, yeah, I think that's pretty handy. And then this together with copper ingot, which we get from another level coming down here, produces alclad aluminum sheet in this, which is just a two input production line, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and then the other thing that happens right here is that we actually produce these heat sinks, which requires some copper sheet, which again just comes from a different level. And it consumes this alclad aluminum sheet um, on the input and the overproduction of this alclad um, first goes into one of these uh, storage containers and if it's full it just gets dumped um, and of course the silica also just gets dumped so whilst we're over here let's just put down a couple more of these heatsink production lines um, which we will need uh, otherwise we're not going to be having enough of those. Uh, I actually forgot to do this earlier. But anyway, all right, so let's put together, well, let's select the heat sink. Here we 
go. Well, heat sink. This is actually kind of higher um, in terms of the input line here. So I'm going to guess it's four. Yep. Uh, so let's put that there. One, two, three, four. Another auto save incoming. actually wrong so we need to go one level up still that's fine let's put that in there here we go no. I was about to say we did this wrong but we didn't actually do it wrong so let's connect this into here, this into here, and then they just need a spot of power. And then they'll start producing. All right, so the heat sinks, um, I'd mark down here. So what the net demand here is actually going to be 20 heat sink for these plutonium fuel rods, right? Um, so we have jobs doubled that to four assemblers that are actually going to be producing 60, no, 30 heat sinks. So we're going to be overproducing this, but that's fine. We're going to be demanding 12 copper sheet and 20 alclad aluminum sheet. Okay, so we have taken care of this. Um, what else? Okay, we still need to go look at the raw quartz, and then that's the last step. So I'm pretty excited for this. And then we can go back up to the top and see all of the uranium waste being processed. All right. And then that's what it takes to actually put together the nuclear power plant. In fact, 70, 70 gigawatts of nuclear power plant. Um, you can see that we are reliably making around 90 gigawatts. Um, and have it no nuclear waste be produced. None at all. Well, I mean, it gets produced, but then it gets processed down, right? All right, where is the um, quartz production? Let's see. Okay, it still goes up one level, so we'll have to just go up there. just have to do a little bit of debugging in some cases. Um, did we go up too high? I think we did. No. What? Did we go up one level too high? I'm confused. <laughs> ah, yeah, we, we went past this level, which of course is where the production line is. All right. So this is where the raw quartz gets lifted through here and then at some point right here we have our quartz production line. So that is, okay, so this is already taken care of. Um, we're going to be producing 200 silica in six constructors, not in 63, but in six. Um, that are going to be producing 223, no, 25 um, silica per minute from, okay, if we double this, 120, 135, I think, raw quartz. Um, so this is already taken care of, um, and this is actually 135. I updated this. Alright, so we just need to put down the output, sorry, the input here. Just, okay, let's try to get that right. Um, still not. <laughs> let's get on here. Here we go. <laughs> Alright. 
right we almost did <laughs> we're getting everything wrong all right this needs to have silica and then get power okay now we just need to connect this in this in we're floundering on the last little bit here all right and then it just needs to aggregate out but yeah, here we go. Now we're making silica as well. So, that's the end-to-end -end process. Now we have every single um, uranium waste um, being consumed up here over time. And then all of these should now be producing as well. Um, now, some of these ones at the back are not producing, so let's go and investigate. Why not? might have made some mistakes all right here we go so no they they have all the material um, it's just about I think some of the other input materials um, getting produced um, over time okay let's make sure okay this doesn't have the material yet which might be the reason let's see so yeah, these are getting input material, just not at a very high rate. Um, and it's probably because these guys are not uh, producing quite at the... F um, like they need to catch up and actually fill up some of these input lines and more of them will actually be um, in use. But yeah, that's what it takes. So in total, 70 gigawatts of power, which is all put down over here right down there so that's all producing so yeah very proud of this production line it's taken 40 hours <laughs> to put together but we finally have put it together so that's a pretty good situation to be in so for the guide that's it thank you for watching until next time bye one more thing at the end of this guide you can actually see <laughs> that we now go to a ridiculous amount of what, nearly a million points per minute sometimes we peak um, so it just depends on how many of the plutonium fuel rods get produced in a given minute but yeah we actually are getting a huge number of these coupons our normal base rate is at around 120,000 I think most of that comes from battery which we're sinking batteries which we're sinking somewhere um, but yeah now we actually get like 700,000 per minute and um, I've been looking at the um, uranium waste storage, so that's actually um, starting to um, reduce as well over time, um, which is a really good sign, and we're expecting it to reduce. And I also went to the uranium, uh, the nuclear power plants, and um, you know a lot of them are starting to actually produce power as well. It's going to take time to like have all of that stuff filter its way through to all of the nuclear power plants right especially that sort of one in the back left because it actually has so many other ones that have to have the inputs kind of fully filled up before we get to that one um, but um, yeah you can see most of these are actually producing now so um, it's just a matter of producing more plutonium waste uh, plutonium stuff and more uranium waste coming back so it's just gonna gradually sort of bounce back and forth and lift lift the production rates up to um, to where they need to be so we will actually get um, a lot more power production probably a lot more than we'll ever need um, you can see that yeah sometimes it goes down back um, but then it comes back up to like nearly 90 gigawatts um, of power production we have about 20 to 30 gigawatts um, connected to the grid from other sources so um, that sort of explains that but yeah um, I just wanted to give you that sort of uh, update because we actually went through and, and checked some of the things so yeah